Hi, this is Simon from the Storytelling with Data team. And today we're gonna to take a look at how you make a diverging bar chart in Excel. If you're new to the channel, welcome. Hope you enjoyed this video and do check out all the other content that we currently have on our channel, covering all manner of different things from tips and tricks to makeovers to presentation techniques. Okay, let's get started. A diverging bar chart, also known as a tornado chart or butterfly chart, is a type of bar chart that combines data for some of the dimensions which point to the right and data for other dimensions pointing in the opposite direction. If we consider a classic bar chart to be in an L shape when we look at the axis then the diverging bar chart appears as more of a T where the diverging element is a base value from which the two values separate out from either side of that. Now one very common use case for a diverging bar chart is uh, survey data, especially survey data on the Likert scale. The Likert scale is a rating scale that allows respondents to rate items uh, on this scale of agreement. Yeah, you know, We could have things like strongly disagree across to strongly agree. Or if we're viewing frequency, maybe never to often. So with our example here, we're going to take a look at some very simple survey data and construct our diverging bar chart from that. So let's hop over to Excel now. Okay, so we've got a pretty simple data table here in front of us. Uh, you can see we have a statement uh, that was posed to our uh, survey uh, responders, our audience, that says our product provides the best value for money and I'll continue subscription for another year. And we've got four different types of responses or four potential options from strongly disagree, disagree, agree, over to strongly agree. And we've got responses from the previous year, last year, and also the current year, this year. Let's take a look now at making our diverging bar chart. First thing we'll do is highlight our data series and then click insert. Choose the bar drop down and then go down to stacked bars here. This gives us a default output of a stacked bar chart. What's currently happening here is that the stacks are showing us this year in blue and last year in orange. And actually we want to swap that around. So each of our stacks represents one of the different uh, option responses. So strongly disagree, disagree, etc. One way we can very quickly do this is just click the switch row and column button up here just to swap those series around. So now you can see we have blue for strongly disagree going all the way across to the yellow for strongly agree. So now we can see we've got our four stacks here based upon our different response options going from the strongly disagree in the blue across to strongly agree uh, in the yellow there on the right hand side. Now, as you can see, uh, we're starting our stacks from the baseline of 0%, uh, going all the way to 100%. So it's a good sense check to make sure that our numbers are all adding up to 100%, but it's not quite achieving what we want yet in terms of the diverging element. So the thing we need to do, and probably the main principle behind creating this diverging bar chart, is to turn the elements that we want to go to the left from the diverging point into negative numbers. So let us do that very quickly. If we take the strongly disagree and make that minus 15 and minus 6 for last year and disagree the same as well. So minus 14 and minus 35. You can start to now get a bit of a sense of how this is progressing. We can see that the zero point is in the middle or towards the middle of the chart with the disagree sentiment diverging to the left and the positive the agree sentiment to the right. So looking a lot better, a few little bits of cleanup to do now. First of all, taking a look at the ordering of these bars. If you look at the legend here at the bottom, we can see that strongly disagree, the blue is right next to uh, the baseline. Actually, if we typically perceive the sentiment going from the strongest negative perception across to the strongest positive one, we should probably put that blue to the left-hand side of the orange. And we can do that by clicking on the charts, clicking chart design, and then select data. And all we need to do here is just change the order of the way these series have been plotted and just move strongly disagree down one space. By doing that, we've now got the blue strongly disagree to the left hand side of the orange. 
Now, one thing here to point out is that the ledger now is slightly the wrong way around, um, but I always am an advocate for uh, doing our own legends anyway. So we'll remove the legend for the time being before putting something back that uh, we create ourselves. OK, this is looking good. So a few more formatting uh, tips here. So I'm going to, first of all, concentrate on our axis. So currently we can see we've got last year and this year and in within the orange block. Well, let's change that by right clicking Format Axis and going down to Labels. And Label Position, I'm going to change from Next to Axis to Low. And whilst I'm in the options here for this particular axis, I am now going to move the horizontal axis, which is currently at the bottom here, up to the top. And the way we can do that is within this horizontal axis crosses section, and we can change it from automatic to maximum category. That just moves it to the top, makes it a little bit more uh, accessible there as we read down at this particular view. The final step I'm going to take on this axis is just change the line style a little bit here. So click on the paint bucket tool here and select line. And I'm just going to make it just ever so slightly darker. Reason for that is that when we remove the grid lines in a second, I want that diverging point, that midpoint to be to slightly more emphasized. So those are the main formatting elements to that particular axis. Let's now turn our attention to uh, our horizontal axis now that we've just recently moved up to the top. Now, the big thing that you can see here is that by encoding our values in the data table as negatives, our axis is now interpreting them uh, naturally as negatives as well. And we want to change this because actually these aren't negative responses. Uh, they are positive responses just on the disagree side. So we need to just trick our axis slightly to uh, present the information in that way. So what we can do is with our axis selected, we can go to our axis options. And we can go down to the bottom here and look at the number. Now, currently, as we can see, the category is percentage, which is correct. And the format code currently says 0%. So our axis is going to display everything in the value uh, that's coming through. So what we can do here is just add a very small element to say that we want positive values coming through to show as a positive number. But now if we add a semicolon, this is now telling Excel how to interpret negative values. And simply, if we say we want the negative values, the other side of this semicolon, to also be represented as positive values, and add that to our axis, you can see now that those negative values there previously have been substituted with positive values. Let's continue with the formatting. I'm going to remove the grid lines now here. And now you can see that zero, that diverging point, uh, becomes a little bit more prominent that we changed earlier. I'm going to just slightly now amend the size of our two axes and change the font to Arial. There we go. Now with the bars themselves, uh, I'm going to first of all make them a little bit thicker. So to do that, we can just click on one of the data series and you can see uh, we've opened up the format data series uh, tool. If not, you can right click and select format data series. And what we're looking for here is the gap width, the gap between these two bars. Currently, it's uh, pretty wide, 150%. Uh, I normally take it down to around 40%. Now that's made the bars quite thick and actually our chart doesn't need to be this tall, so we can just reduce the size of it slightly there. One thing I noticed when we removed the grid lines and made this chart slightly smaller is that we're missing uh, an element of our axis. We should be adding tick marks here just to give a little bit of structure. So to add tick marks in the format axis pane window, we can go to tick marks and then select the major type of our tick marks to be outside. And that now gives us uh, that view of those tick marks and a little bit more structure as we begin to look down our graph. In terms of colors now, currently these colors were assigned right at the beginning when we created this chart. So we should probably look to do something with these. Now, uh, this is a little bit personal preference, but I like to think of the negative size being in sort of my slightly gray or darker colors. And then as we get towards the agree size, the positive sentiment uh, to be maybe more of your emphasis color, that could be your brand color or uh, a nicer, stronger, uh, more friendly color uh, that we could look at for that positive side of things. So let's change those now. So I'm going to pick a very dark gray for the strongly disagree on the fill. And I'm going to choose a white border for that. So 
So now as we look at this, we get a good sense of the negative perceptions here going off to the left, the gray colors, and then the blue colors being the positive. Uh, agree sentiment. Last couple of final steps now. Uh, Going to remove the chart title and bring that back in a little bit when we bring our legend and other elements back. Uh, also, we had a chart border. Let's remove that. Right clicking, uh, formatting chart area, and remove the border here. So now we've got our base chart, which is pretty much ready to go. I will just add on our various chart titles and legends. Let's do that now. Now we have our chart title together with a legend that we've just added back in there. And you can see we're using the same color for the words in the legend as we are for the bars to help create that additional association there. If you did want to label the bars, you can absolutely do that. That is achieved by clicking on the charts, right click and add data labels. I'll just change, uh, click on the data labels themselves and change the fonts and size and color. Now, if you wanted to label the uh, disagree size of things, now if you do that, what you will see if we change the format of those is the negative value that's coming back. That, of course, is the data that we're encoding here. You can use the same tip to change these values that we did a little bit earlier for our axis. So let's just click on these now and go to Format Data Labels before going to the number drop down, changing this to a percentage, and then in the format code, using exactly the same format that we did before. So 0%, semicolon, 0%, and that will achieve uh, the same as we achieve with our horizontal axis, like so. And if we take a look at the data now, we can see if we compare these two bars together that the this year bar at the bottom has moved further to the right. So indicating more of a positive sentiment here, more agree responses coming in. But also there's a little bit of a polarization going on. Uh, the strongly disagree has increased as well as the strongly agree. So leaving both the disagree and agree portions smaller uh, than they were this time last year. Occasionally, uh, we do get survey responses with a neutral option. So you have the, the disagree, the agree, but then something in the middle. Uh, if people maybe aren't aware or don't want to commit to a response or a, a sentiment either way. Uh, the way to look at that within a diverging bar chart is to split the neutral in half. So you can see from the table here, we've done that. So neutral is indeed 10 percent of which 5% is going to go to the left of the diverging element, 5% is going to go to the right. And the same with last year, 12%, uh, so 6 either way. And you can see how that looks on the bar chart here. You can see that split uh, halfway between that, the two points there. So there we go, a diverging bar chart in Excel there. And please do leave a comment below if there's any other types of graphs or charts that you uh, would like to see a similar tutorial made on. Until next time. Have a great day and goodbye.